Good evening. Welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. After weeks of hype and innuendo and threats and a lot of hysterics, we finally have the House Intelligence Committee memo in hand tonight. We're going to spend the next hour telling you about it, what's in it, what it means, what it tells us about how our leaders govern when we're not watching them. If you're a regular viewer, you know we rarely spend an entire show on a single topic. We think this is worth it. There's been so much lying about this memo by partisans in Congress and hyenas in the press that its lessons are at risk of being drowned out and lost. We think truth is the antidote to that. So to begin with, what does the memo actually say? Well, as it turns out, it's not primarily about Donald Trump or even about the broader Russia investigation. The memo is really the story of a semi-obscure Trump campaign volunteer called Carter Page, who back in 2016 was identified by the Obama administration as a secret agent of the Putin government. Four times FBI officials went to a federal surveillance court and argued they had probable cause to believe that Carter Page was working with Russian spies. He was an agent of a foreign government. Three times, FBI Director Jim Comey personally signed off on this claim. Deputy Director Andrew McCabe and Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein put their names to it as well. So why were all of these officials so certain that Page, who was a Naval Academy graduate who has no criminal record, was betraying his country? Because we now know they were relying on the Trump dossier. That's the still unverified opposition research dump paid for by the RNC and the Hillary campaign and compiled by a British spy called Christopher Steele. The Trump dossier made spying on Carter Page possible. How are we sure of that? Because Andrew McCabe of the FBI said so behind closed doors under oath to Congress just this past December. Now, Democrats are now furiously denying that in anonymous leaks to sympathetic reporters, but it's obviously true. In a minute, we'll talk to a member of Congress who was in the room when McCabe said it. But ask yourself, if the FBI had powerful additional evidence that Page was a Russian spy, why did they include the dossier in their request at all? Indeed, why did they lead with it? The Trump dossier allowed our government to spy on Carter Page. That is not a talking point. It is a fact. And given that it's a fact, it is remarkable to learn that the FBI knew at the time that the dossier was unreliable, to put it char charitably. An independent FBI unit analyzed that document and found its claims, quote, only minimally corroborated. The FBI also knew that the dossier's author, Christopher Steele, was an inflamed partisan working on behalf of political operatives trying to win a presidential race, you'll remember. Steele actually told DOJ employee Bruce Orr that he was, quote, desperate that Donald Trump not get elected and was passionate about him not being president. So assessing all of this, no rational person could in good faith treat the Trump dossier as fact. And yet that is exactly how the FBI presented it to the FISA court when they asked to spy on Carter Page. They never mentioned any of the facts we just gave you. They hid them. That is lying. There is no other way to describe it. They've been busted lying, but they won't admit it. Former FBI Director Jim Comey took to Twitter today not to apologize for any of this or even to address the facts the memo raised, but to mock the release of the memo, like the aspiring MSNBC contributor he apparently is. Dishonest and misleading, he said. He didn't bother to explain how it was dishonest and misleading. Of course he didn't. Comey, who leaked his notes on private meetings with the president in a petty revenge move after being fired, is now declaring it beyond the pale somehow for Congress to carry out its constitutional duties of oversight of the FBI. Comey apparently views the FBI as a fourth co-equal branch of government, not subject to the authority of the other three. Suddenly, a lot of people in Washington seem to agree with him. The current FBI director, for example, the one that Trump chose, Christopher Wray, he apparently argued that the names of FBI officials in the memo ought to be redacted, hidden from public view. Why? How exactly would that serve the public interest? It would not serve the public interest. It would protect the FBI. And as always, that was the point. All of this should make you nervous, the dishonesty mixed with self-righteousness. Looking back, you wonder how many people at the FBI ever even believed, just for a moment even, that Carter Page was actually a Russian agent. They clearly don't believe that now. If they did, Page would be in handcuffs. Yet he's still a free man, though his civil liberties have been violated and his reputation has been destroyed. Democrats could not care less. They're still pretending that somehow Carter Page hurt this country. They know that's a lie. But Page himself, or what happens to him in the future, is all irrelevant to them. 
If he can be used to destroy a president they hate, they are happy to use him, even if he is crushed in the process. And that may be the real lesson of this memo, and it's the reason we're spending an hour on it tonight. Ten years from now, Donald Trump will be gone, and Democrats will have forgotten that they once pretended to fear Russia as a threat to our democracy or whatever. But our law enforcement and intelligence agencies will remain as long as this country stays intact, and we have got to trust them. We give them incredible powers, awesome powers, including the power to take human life, the most basic of all. We allow them, by the way, to operate in secrecy because they tell us they must. In exchange for all of that, we ask them to operate with integrity, to prove to us that they haven't become tools of a political regime, because always and everywhere, that is the temptation. And unfortunately, it looks like it just happened here. Joe DeGeneuve is a former U.S. attorney for the District of Columbia. Tom Fitton is president of Judicial Watch. Both have been following this from the very beginning, and they both join us tonight. Joe, first to you, what jumps out of this memo now that we have it? Uh, Andrew McCabe's testimony that uh, but for the dossier, there would have been no application to the court for a warrant. on. So Democrats case. are saying on background, no one I don't think has come out and t said it, but are saying that's not true. He never said that. It, it's true. Uh, I've confirmed it with people who were in the room. Uh, but what it does show us is that everything we have suspected and that was on the public record from the FISA court ruling and all of that shows us that, in fact, senior DOJ and FBI officials not only lied to the American people, but they lied to a FISA court repeatedly over a number of months about what they knew to be false information and inadequate information being provided to a very secret court. It's a disgraceful period in the history of the department and the FBI and James Comey and Loretta Lynch and all the people involved in this have performed disgracefully and unconstitutionally, which is even more important. Tom Fitton, what jumps out at you? The dossier is central to the Russia collusion theory targeting Trump. And that's the basis for the appointment of Robert Mueller. So you've got the corruption associated with the FISA surveillance. You've got the corruption associated with the FBI and DOJ working hand in glove with the Clinton campaign to push this narrative beginning in the summer of 2016. And it all led to the appointment of Robert Mueller. The, there is no Russia collusion story without the dossier. And we now know and have confirmed six ways to Sunday there was nothing behind it. So therefore, why is there a special counsel investigation? That is a good question. So what would help a lot, I think, to, and would answer basic questions, would be the declassification of a number of subsequent documents, yes. including at least part of McCabe's testimony before the House Intel Committee, but also at least parts of these FISA requests. Are we going to see those declassified? Yes, I think probably eventually. What's interesting about this, you know, the Democrats were complaining that the release of this four-page memo would... Uh, compromise sources and methods. It would destroy the ability of the American intelligence community to collect intelligence. All of that is obviously nonsensical when you look at the memorandum. What is clear now as a result of the memorandum is that huge amounts of underlying intelligence have to be declassified and have to be shown to the American people so they can understand what Tom just described, that the FBI and the DOJ basically conspired with the Democratic Party the DNC and the Hillary Clinton campaign to exonerate her of violations of the Espionage Act and in the course of trying to prevent Donald Trump from becoming president to frame him for a non-existent crime of collusion. You know, we just sued for the dossier do or the uh, under underlying FISA documents today. So Have those ever been released in any previous case? That you're sure, aware? they've been released in the James Rosen case where uh, Mueller's FBI improperly targeted uh, James Rosen, the Fox News correspondent. Yes, and his parents. Right, and then in the AP case. So there is precedent for the courts releasing this information. And of course, the agencies can declassify it and ask the court to declassify right. it. You know, and what's also troubling is we were lied to just this week because we were told by the FBI and Department of Justice, and evidently the President of the United States was told the sky would fall if this information was released. There was no classified information in there, and there were no names that were released that would harm the FBI or DOJ interests. These were high-level officials who ordinarily would have been subject to public disclosure in, in discussions of public uh, documents like this. Why was the department, why were they trying to railroad President Trump into keeping this document secret? Because they were protecting themselves. And, and then it comes out and they're trying to say it's no big deal. Right, or that you're unpatriotic for asking questions. So finally, Joe, this raises, I think, concerns for every American of, of all political postures about 
the behavior of the FBI. Are there any elected Democrats you know who are saying, you know, we should find out how our government is behaving? No, and in fact, it's, it's really quite sad. But it does now put the focus on Jeff Sessions and Rod Rosenstein. I have a lot of confidence in Jeff Sessions ultimately doing the right thing. I have very little confidence in Rod Rosenstein, yeah. no confidence in Chris Ray. We need a federal grand jury to investigate what the Bureau and the Department of Justice under Obama did to do what happened in this case. These, there are serious crimes that were committed by government officials. There needs to be a federal grand jury, and it needs to happen now. Thank you both very much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Congressman Lee Zeldin is a Republican who represents the state of New York. He says he wants the memo supporting evidence released right away. Congressman, thanks all for joining us tonight. Um, Good to be with you, Tucker. So you say that the documents we were just talking about, for example, um, the, the evidence the FBI brought to the FISA court to justify spying on this American citizen, Carter Page, ought to be released to the public. What's the argument against that? The argument against it would be that there could be some information uh, over the course of the FISA application as you're reviewing all the documents that will include sources and methods that may need to get redacted. Uh, in the effort to argue against uh, providing any of the related uh, material that was sourced, uh, some might say that we shouldn't be releasing any of it. Uh, the counter argument that I would provide, though, to that is that anything at all that can possibly be released to the American public, it's one thing when you read a, a, the majority memo that was released today. It's another thing when you get an opportunity to read the Schiff memo when, when that comes out. But when you actually are seeing the documents created by the Obama Justice Department and the Obama FBI, and you're seeing the FISA abuse and the misconduct at the highest levels of these agencies, for yourself and the documents are, are actually created by them, then the American public is able to form their own independent judgment on their own without having to rely on what might be filters of Adam Schiff through a third party in the media, you know, through a Twitter account, and then you're being educated on believing that, say, the memo that got released today was going to have all these sources and methods that shouldn't, or right. when Schiff was complaining that it was going to um, you, know, you, you, you get the point. I mean, when he was talking about uh, you know th th those details, I mean, it's when reality comes out and the memos uh, you could see for yourself. Well, and how about, how about this? Independent judgment. So quickly, the the thing that Democrats are pushing back against tonight is the really the pivotal line in the memo that says Andrew McCabe in behind closed doors testimony to the Intel Committee said the memo was the basis in a the dossier was the basis of the request for the uh, before before the FISA court. Can we get a copy of that part, the relevant part of his testimony? Absolutely, and we should. The transcript should come out and people could see for themselves that once again, Adam Schiff and the House Intel Democrats, they're just lying. As they said, they were complaining that uh, Devin Nunes and the majority uh, were making changes to the document, right. uh, even though that some, it was just grammatical uh, changes and, and those other substantive changes that were made were changes requested by the minority on the no, Intel Committee aware. as well as the most substantive change, which was done by the FBI. Exactly. Congressman, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Thanks, Tucker. The apparent ease with which the FBI was able to monitor Carter Page without his knowing it should have the rest of us asking, when is it acceptable to spy on U.S. citizens? Has the norm become that it's always acceptable for the U.S. government to spy on its own people? Glenn Greenwald writes for The Intercept. He spent a lot of time covering the American surveillance state, and he joins us tonight. Glenn, thanks for coming on. Great to be with you, Tucker. So I should, in the interest of honesty, note the obvious irony, which is the Congress, the Republican Congress, just reauthorized the law that made this possible in the first place and did so with very little public debate on the subject. And so that raises kind of a more basic question, which is, why is this question, when and how and for what reason the U.S. government spies on its own people, why is that so rarely debated in public? It's a great question. I mean, it's the reason why Edward Snowden decided to risk going to prison, because he was so concerned that this huge, massive surveillance state was being constructed in secret, directed not just at foreign adversaries, but inward, domestically at the American people, without anybody knowing about it. And so he came forward because he was so concerned that Congress and the, and the Senate never debated it, never discussed what the parameters are. And the irony is that we've had Democrats, on the one hand, spending the last year warning that Trump is this lawless tyrant 
government endangering democracy. We've had the Republicans saying the deep state is endangering democracy by abusing its power. And yet Democrats, the leadership anyway, not the majority, got together with the Republican majority, including Devin Nunez, who authored the memo today, right. and just not more than two weeks ago, voted to increase spying power and block all safeguards on how it's used. So it's really incredible now to watch this debate unfold. Well, it's it's actually almost nauseating. Um, and, and as I said, totally ironic. So you know a lot about how this works, what, legal, what is legal and what is not legal. What does the U.S. government need to show to a judge or a series of judges in order to get permission to legally spy on a U.S. citizen? So in order to target a U.S. citizen the way that they targeted Carter Page, um, which means essentially that they're going to listen to all of his phone calls, read his emails, uh, monitor him digitally, they need to demonstrate to a FISA court, which is a court that meets in secret with just the Justice Department president, that there's probable cause to believe that he's an agent of either a foreign government or a terrorist organization. Um, so they convinced a, a judge, obviously, a, a FISA court judge, that there's probable cause to believe that Carter page as an agent of the Russian government. How often are those requests turned down? Do we know? Almost never. Um, there's something like a 99.8% uh, approval rate. Um, the FISA court is a joke in terms of whether or not it provides real safeguards or oversight for how the NSA and the FBI uh, can spy on American citizens. Uh, they basically rubber stamp whatever it is that's put in front of them. And so Democrats used to say that a lot um, when George Bush and Dick Cheney got caught right. spying on Americans without going to the FISA court. Um, the, the, the argument of the Bush administration was it's so burdensome, and Democrats said, well, it's so easy. They never turn you down. Um, and now Democrats are trying to say, oh, it's a very rigorous process. It's not. They almost never, ever say no. Yeah. Glenn Greenwald, who's been a brave voice from the left on this subject for many years. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Good to be with you, Tucker. So what exactly in this memo was so dangerous that you weren't supposed to see it? It would endanger this country for you to read it. We'll ask someone who's been making that case next. The president wants it out, even though there are concerns that the work of tens of thousands of law enforcement and counterintelligence professionals may be smeared. It's staggering to see how Republicans continue to put party over principle. This is a tipping point for our democracy. Are we going to be a democracy after today, or is this going to be demagoguery and despotism? Paul Ryan is now no longer on Team USA or on even Team Old Republican Party. He's on Team Nunes, which means he's on Team Trump, which means to some extent they're all they're advancing in some sense the interests of Russia. Ask questions and you're working for Putin. Well, there's a particularly a meltdown over the lease of the FBI memo by the hyenas in the press. Why is that? Why shouldn't we have been allowed to see it? What's wrong with a little transparency? Chris Hahn, a former aide to Senator Schumer and radio show host, enjoys this tonight. So, Chris, that's a, it's a super simple question. Why should I, as a taxpayer, a voter, an adult man, why should, if Democrats had their way, I wouldn't have been allowed to see this. Why? Why? I think that the big problem with it wasn't just that they didn't want you to see the memo. They wanted well, they it They didn't all. want me to see it. Well, Why didn't they want me to see it? Well, they wanted to have some balance. They wanted to see the source documents released so that people could no, make their didn't. own judgment. That's and they wanted true. their memo released as well. Look, I've been reading this memo all day, Tucker. You know, so, read... so, so, so we steps up. They didn't want the source documents released. That, that's factually untrue. They could release them right now. For example, the testimony of Andrew McCabe before the Intel Committee is a source document. The request to the FISA court, those are source documents. Democrats don't want those released. Of course they do. Of oh, absolutely really? Then, course they then do. why haven't they? Uh, uh, come on I, now. I, I've talked to you about this last week. These are the exact things I said last week about this document. We Let's see all the documents. Let's see okay. the source well, documents. Then, then we're in agreement there, and I think that we will. Yes. And I'll be interesting to see who stands in the way of that. Right. But up until today, Democrats have stood in the way of releasing this. Now, if you think that there is libelous material in here, factually inaccurate material that libels somebody, tell me. If you think it imperils American national security, tell me how. Right. But in the absence of those two factors, I have a right to see it. Why would Democrats stand in the way of that right? You know what? I've been reading this all day, and it kind of reminds me of when Geraldo Rivera opened Al Capone's vault. There was a lot of hype, and then there was nothing in it. 
I don't well, know. Then why would Democrats I, who had, wait, hold on, then why would Democrats, if there's nothing in it, de every Democrat in the House had a chance to read this, every single one. Right. Why would they, having read it, tell me that I'm not allowed to see it? I'm confused. You're making two arguments uh, that contradict Let me tell another. you something. I'm watching this document now. I'm looking at this document now. They probably should have just said, let it out, because it proves nothing. It doesn't endanger the Russia probe. It actually shows that Papadopoulos was uh, under surveillance for good reason. There's a lot of things in there that actually prove the case that a lot of okay, Democrats have been I'm, making I'm not on the here Hill. to rebut. Look, I'm not here to rebut the rationale for the Russia right. probe. That may be another show. But this memo doesn't speak to those things. You're right. I said it at the outset. Right. What it speaks to is the surveillance of an American citizen called Carter Page, who graduated from the Naval Academy yeah. and has in the years since shown no evidence at all that he's working for the Russian that's, government. That's and not true. That's well, not oh, true at all. Okay. Carter so, Page. Carter Page has been oh. under surveillance by the FBI since 2013 when he was approached no, no. by the Russians. I'm, and he okay, was but, told but, he was but told that he was under he was being okay. recruited by the Russians. But by you're the FBI. missing you're missing this. Hold on. Yeah. There's no evidence. I'm not saying he wasn't surveilled. Indeed, he was surveilled. That's the point. There's no in order to be surveilled, the Obama Justice Department had right. to make the case that he was a foreign agent. There's yeah. no evidence that he was a foreign agent. There that is, is a slander against him. So where's the evidence that he was working for Russia, that he betrayed America? Well, that this, he is this memo, this memo isn't concerned about evidence. This memo is concerned about I'm asking Devin you. Nunez. There, there's been there, since 2013, the FBI has been warning Carter Page about Russians trying to recruit him. He continued down but the same path. That doesn't mean that he. Oh, so he's guilty? Is that so? It's a really simple question. Do you think that Carter Page has betrayed his country by working for a hostile foreign nation? That's the claim the Obama Justice Department made to a FISA court four times. I don't and know. I want to know: Is it true or not? I don't know if it's true or not. But when we see the kind underlying of a heavy source charge document, to make against a man, don't when you think? we see the source documents, we're going to find out what Carter Page was doing. It's true. If it's, if it's true, connected to the Trump. Well, uh, why is campaign? he not in jail? Why does Carter Page stride a free man when he has betrayed his country? That's I do, a, I do, these that's are very heavy charges you guys are throwing around but against someone who has not been indicted or convicted, and and against whom there is no publicly available evidence. Why and I don't Carter understand Page, why you continue to do that. Why Carter Page is walking the street is a question that should keep a lot of Republicans up at night. Let's just leave it at that. I, I, you know, it's hard to believe you would say something like that on live television. Do you have evidence that he is working no, against America? No, I have America? absolutely no evidence. But when, you, when a guy has been under surveillance by the FBI since 2013, and there were four FISA Martin renewals. Martin Luther King was under surveillance for uh, you, more than a decade by the FBI. Does that mean a, he's guilty? You cannot like, what is get this? a FISA renewal unless you show the judge you have evidence that the American citizen was involved with what you are claiming he was but involved with. But we know now, and it's indisputable that at least part of that evidence, the lead of the FISA request was the Trump dossier, which that the FBI itself... That is not itself, what this memo even says. It does not it, say that. It certainly that. does and it say surely that. doesn't prove that. That's for sure. Okay. Just, I just want to restate one, one question to you. Yeah. Do you have evidence, any evidence, that Carter Page is guilty of the crimes you've charged him with on this show. Absolutely and the crime specifically, not. I don't know if Then he's you probably shouldn't suggest he's guilty well, of betraying his Well, I didn't say he was guilty. I think he might be talking to some people, and that's probably why he's still walking the streets. Well, this is getting really heavy. Okay, thank you, Chris. <laughs> thank I appreciate you. it. Could even more documents be on the way? A renowned law professor explains whether today's release could set a new precedent for transparency where you might have a tiny shot of understanding what your government is doing in your name. Stay tuned. We're spending all of tonight's show on a single topic, something we rarely do, but we think it's worth it. We're still unraveling the contents of today's FBI memo. Some are already calling for even more documents to be released. Could declassifying this have set a new precedent for transparency and given you a better sense of what your government is doing? That's the hope. Jonathan Turley is a professor at George Washington University, and he joins us tonight. Jonathan, thanks for coming on. Thanks. So this was the explicit concern of the agencies, including the Department of Justice, in releasing this memo, the Nunes memo. If we release this, we're going to have to start telling the public a lot more about what we're doing, and we don't want to. Will they have to? Well, that's what's, the, what's most disturbing about this. Regardless of the content of the memo, you have this disconnect between what the FBI said, what Democratic members said about the release of this memo. Those of us who have been working in national security cases a long time expected there to be some type of footprint of sources and methods. 
There wasn't. This thing wasn't even remotely classified. And that really concerns a lot of us because it's, it's the use of classified classification laws for tactical purposes. That if you look at what the FBI said, they said, we want this thing to remain classified because it's inaccurate due to omissions. Well, that's complaining about how the facts are being portrayed, not that they are classified. And many critics have said for years that the FBI and other agencies have been classifying material to avoid embarrassment. And this may be the most public and relatively rare example of that. There's nothing remotely in this memo that justifies the rhetoric used by Minority Leader Pelosi, ranking member Schiff. They all said that there would be dire consequences. And the FBI director and the FBI said that th there would be grave you know, problems that would arise with the release. And then you look at the memo and it's sort of an empty grave. So the Freedom of Information Act, as I understand it, says unless government has a compelling reason to keep something secret, it has to release everything unless it can show it it shouldn't because it belongs to the public. But it seems in Washington the instinct is the opposite. Everything is classified unless there's political pressure to declassify. I think that's right. I think one thing that we should be able to agree on is take a look at this memo. Anyone looking at this memo can see that it was written to avoid sources and methods. It's basically what we had already heard, with the difference is that there was discussions of testimony and other details. But there's no disclosures of new sources. It was confirming that the dossier was a critical part, if not the determinative part, in securing that FISA order. So the question returns us to, why did all these members say that this would jeopardize national security. We can have disagreements about what to do with the FBI. We should not have disagreements about something like this. When you say that there's a national security risk about a document being released, and it is something of this kind that doesn't have any sources of methods or sensitive information, it's a problem because that's lying to the American people. No, that's exactly right. And we actually have a member of the Intel Committee on in a minute. I'm going to lead with that question right there. So thank you for that. Thank you. Jonathan Turley. Just how big a scandal are the revelations we read today? One former FBI official thinks it's a profound problem for the country. He joins us next to explain why. Of course, most media outlets have spent far more time and effort covering the FBI memo's release and the actual allegations contained in the memo itself. It's almost like the allegations, which are that the U.S. government illegitimately spied on its own citizens, barely matter to them. They don't care about you or something. It's funny. Andrew Clavin is a contributing editor at City Journal. Terry Churchy is a former FBI deputy assistant director for counterterrorism, and they both join us tonight. Terry, first to you, since this pertains to the agency you spent so much time at, you're hearing people on other channels, there's almost a, a chorus of it, and it's becoming almost hysterical, I would say, that people who are interested in seeing this information or have questions about the FBI are unpatriotic, that they are insulting the men and women of the FBI. Do you think that? No, I don't think that at all, Tucker. In fact, everything the FBI does should be out in the open and we should be questioning it. And certainly we should be having questions about things like this. Nothing about any of these cases and what has been now confirmed in the memo uh, have ever looked normal. And we have to ask ourselves, why were so many safeguards and guidelines and procedures that we always followed, never followed here? And I'll, I'll say one more thing uh, to that. When I left the FBI uh, and when I went into the FBI, we had a saying that you, you don't want to even just be concerned about propriety and the propriety of what you do. You also want to be equally concerned about the appearance of impropriety. Right. And in fact, I have a lot of friends and colleagues that got in a lot of trouble because of the appearance of impropriety. And this has that at the very minimum written all over it. Yeah. And so you don't just to be just to make sure I'm absolutely clear on this, you don't feel diminished as a veteran of the FBI when people ask questions about its behavior? Not at all. And in fact, I've yeah. talked to a lot of friends uh, in the FBI and outside, and all of us are concerned about uh, the irregularities of this and, and the top level of the FBI in the last uh, few months. Yeah, well, I can certainly see why. Um, so, Mr. Clayman, what do you make of the press coverage of this? Do you think it has been designed to serve the public interest or something else? 
Oh, I think it's a scandal within a scandal and almost as bad as the scandal in the FBI. I mean, we just finished watching uh, Spielberg's movie, The Post, about how brave the Washington Post was uh, to defy the Nixon administration and bring out the Pentagon Papers despite their cries that it would hurt national security. Right. Now suddenly national security is sacrosanct and more important than information. I remember decades of the left uh, squealing about J. Edgar Hoover and his unjustified wiretaps, and now suddenly we're told that unjustified Justified wiretapping is a nothing burger. You know, the press has been done nothing for this past year but whine about how Donald Trump has slapped them back and forth. But now, when it comes to releasing information, this is information that in no way damaged uh, the public good, in no way dam damaged our national security. The press, the people who are supposed to speak truth to power and about power, are trying to cover it up and suppress it and spin it to make it less important. It's it's actually appalling, and it it, it just brings that. That old, that old Latin tag, you know, who will guard the guardians? If we've lost a press that really cares about the truth, if we've lost a press willing to hold any powerful person uh, to high standards, then we've lost the people who are supposed to guard. So, so but how does how does a guardians? journalist, how does someone who calls himself a journalist, whose default position you would think would always be more information, as long as there's no grave downside, how does that person argue against showing the public things it's entitled to see? It's amazing, and I really do think it is a holdover from the Obama administration, uh, an administration that was that turned the federal government essentially into a Chicago-style machine full of cronies and corruption and out, outward malfeasance. I mean, malfeasance we could see, like the IRS yeah. scandal, while the press stood by, afraid, I think, to lay a finger on a president who they looked at as, uh, you know, the first black president, certainly, and as a, the, speak, the spokesman for their point of view, their ideological point of view, and they didn't want to touch him. And when you have no press, the government is going to get out of control, and the Obama administration did. Very quickly, Ms. Churchy, do you think that it's in the FBI's interest to declassify what it can as it pertains to this investigation? You know, things that don't obviously jeopardize our national security, but to the extent it can, tell us more. The, the natural tendency for me and any other FBI official would be to say uh, no, but in this instance, yeah. uh, the answer is definitely yes. This, yeah. this goes way beyond what the FBI does, what the case is about, or, or what this particular series of circumstances is about. This, this goes right to the idea of civil liberties and the balance that the FBI is responsible for ensuring between criminal investigations, national security, and civil liberties. And we messed up. And uh, we just simply have to get this out. And the sooner we do, the sooner people see as much as they can see and as much as is safe to show them is from, from a national security perspective, uh, the better off we'll all be. Because uh, right now, as we've seen today, national yeah. security wasn't the argument for this. No, they lied about that. Thank you both. That was really interesting. I appreciate your perspective. Thanks, Tucker. Well, one congressman on the Intel Committee says the memos released today is an attack on the rule of law. Why exactly? He joins us next to explain. If he were to release that memo, he would not only be endangering our country, but he would also uh, be violating the rules of the Congress of the United States. The release of this memo is really reminiscent of the darkest days of the McCarthy era. There is zero uh, proof or even evidence uh, that there is uh, uh, political bias uh, in the FBI. But if you say it long enough and, is, and, and often enough, there will be people who have doubts about it. And it's mm. a profoundly unpatriotic thing to do. You're not patriotic if you want your questions answered. Democrats are lashing out. That's not even strong enough. Something profound is happening here. But they're very upset uh, by the release of the FBI memo. House leader, minority leader Nancy Pelosi said President Trump, quote, just sent his friend Putin a bouquet. Many have said similar intemperate things, including Democratic Congressman Eric Swalwell of California, who joins us tonight. So, Congressman, um, many Democrats, including Democratic leaders, uh, Pelosi and Schiff, to name two, said before this was released that its release would jeopardize American national security. That turned out to be a lie, provably, because there's nothing in this that was classified. In fact, there's it's no obvious reason it was classified in the first place. So why would they tell us that when they knew it wasn't true? Good evening, Tucker. Uh, you should be concerned about this, too. It does reveal sources. You should read 
uh, the memo just because you knew the sources beforehand because they were reported on doesn't mean we acknowledge them in ongoing investigations. So please the be precise about how here, though, please be precise about how it jeopardizes our national security because a lot of us are concerned about doing that and I would never want to play any role in doing that and that's why it's such a serious charge and that's why well, we make it. You're playing a role in doing that right now. By, well, tell me how you're playing a role. Because we don't acknowledge sources in ongoing investigations. What source are you FISA talking about, and, and how does that imperil well, our country? Well, the, the, me, the memo goes into Papadopoulos and Page and others that you only knew about because they were reported on, not because well, they I were I knew about but because Papadopoulos say, Tucker, was indicted, the larger, and the memo came the, out today. So just explain to me how you just accuse yeah. me of endangering American national security, yeah. and I think it's fair to ask you to be very precise in explaining how I'm doing that. So please do. The, the larger danger that, that no, you're no, doing no, and, and others are doing you is just the, the rule of me law, per, Tucker. Oh, slow down. You're you just using accused, the police oh, slow, no, I'm not to go let you after go your political enemies. I'm not going to let you go. Yeah. You just I, I so you, you got two. You got two choices. You can either apologize and take it back, or you can explain <laughs> it. I think it's fair to ask you to I, explain, I explain what it, you Tucker. meant when you said I was. Yeah. How? How does that jeopardize our country's security? Because we don't reveal the sources in ongoing investigations. Tucker, right now in every so police now that station this in America, has been revealed, the police, how Tucker, are we let me finish. In let me okay. finish, Tucker. In every police station in America, the police are interviewing a suspect. And you're suggesting that we should give the suspect the evidence before we ask them the questions. Who's but the this suspect? Is about the rule I'm honestly of law. Can, what We're trampling the hell are you over the rule about? of law in this country. But what, they gave what, the White House evidence in the Russia okay. investigation. The I'm White House are subjects of the White House. Of the, I'm talking of about Russian. me. Hold on. I'm talking about me as an American citizen who yeah. got a chance to read this much talked about memo today. And I listened to people like you tell me, and now explicitly tell me, that I'm hurting our country by reading it. And I want to know how and I'm doing it. You're also hurting that. our country by not acknowledging the rule of law has been run over. They're using the police to okay. attack their one, enemies. I'm sorry. Attacking the one police death penalty offense at a time here. One, okay. One serious <laughs> crime at a time. So I don't I still understand. Like it, Tucker, you don't but have I think an you're answer, which is one. why you're not answering yeah. my question. But I, I would gave suggest you a bunch of answers, not Tucker. make it. No, yeah. I, I have literally you don't no like idea the what answer. you're talking about. That's the problem. Then why don't you, you don't try like this the one? answer? We know from this yeah. that Carter Page four times was described by the Department of Justice, by the FBI, as an agent of a foreign power, Russia. Four times. So the question and to you is. And in 2013 as well. To, he was not accused of that in 2013. He was no, surveilled. Actually, he we, acknowledged we to our know, committee. You unless should read you're his revealing something that has not been revealed before. But let I'm me ask revealing you something you should have read, which was his testimony to our committee, where he acknowledged he was person A in the indictment in 2013, I, where he okay. was suspected of being a Russian foreign agent. Oh, but I don't, think he, I don't think he was accused of it. Let me ask you this, though. Do you think he was? He was? Suspected do you of think? It. Okay, fine. Do you think, since the DOJ accused him of that before a FISA court, do you believe it? Is he a foreign agent? Simple question. What do you think? He, he was under suspicion. It's an ongoing investigation that's not closed. That's the problem, Tucker. But it's do you still think open, he is? A, no, but do you, want, think, uh, you want us do you to, think he's a foreign to comment agent? on it? It's open. It's no, still we, an open investigation. Well, I think Tucker. you're, I think you're entitled to your opinion and under the Constitution. Them in real time. If you're going to impugn the man's character, as you relentlessly have, suggesting that he's betraying his country, committing treason, I think it's fair to ask you, man to man, an honest question, a straightforward one with no innuendo do you think he's betraying his country? I think you're not allowing the FBI to answer that question with what you and others are doing to undermine the work. You've got to be work. kidding. I, all I want no, is for my questions to be answered. I sit here, an open, willing repository for all information, including your memo, including the documents that supported this memo, including the so testimony So you support our memo coming committee. out. I want to be clear. Of course I do. Are do you, you kidding? support our of memo coming I out? Of course I do. Absolutely I okay. do. I support we should talk all about information it next week. that gets to the truth. Invite me back. What I don't support, I'll be in Washington. Is, making, what I don't support is making reckless <laughs> allegations about other Americans that you cannot support, as when you said I was harming our country's national security, and as when you suggested Carter Page was betraying this nation. And I want to know. You're peddling you have, a narrative I, that undermines the I'm not peddling a narrative. I'm asking a question. You just said on my air, on my show, you're imperiling our national security. I said, oh, really, Congressman? How am I doing that? Am I going to be arrested for that? Because, I don't know, it seems like the kind of thing a man could be arrested for. Yeah, th these are important times in our history. Either you are I've supporting noticed. those that are undermining the independence of the Department of Justice and the rule of law, or you're standing firm and saying this is wrong. Tucker, I wish you were on my side because I think you know better. I'm not sure what the hell you're talking about. I only wish I think that you don't you like what I'm talking about. Si oh, well, I definitely don't like what you're talking about, but more profoundly, I don't understand it. And when you accuse you someone of committing a crime for which people are arrested, why don't you game it out for me? Tell me one thing that I have said that you think makes all Americans, including my children, less safe. You continue to support the idea that we should give 
suspects in criminal cases the evidence against them before we ask them any questions. Well, you I, also I, believe I, that there's I don't, nothing I don't wrong support that. I do think we should give them the benefit of the doubt, as the, the Constitution requires us to. You. Call me a liberal. When have I said that I think that we should give evidence to, I'm not even sure what that means. By the way, I think people charged in a, in a criminal case have the right to the evidence against them, do don't you, they? Do you think, what, wait, wait, well, so not are, when you, they're being are you aware of that? Not when they're don't? being questioned, Tucker. Yeah, Tucker, not when they're being questioned, not when they're under suspicion. Do you think it's a problem so that the White House was sent evidence in the Russia investigation? Okay. Do you think it's a problem that they were sent evidence in the Russia investigation when they are subjects? of the investigation, you don't see a conflict there? What in the, no, no, Donald I, Trump I, and maybe Don, I would, Don but McGahn. In, this, in the case of today's memo, what specifically have I espoused that empowers threats to our country? You're, you're peddling the narrative that the Trump administration is putting out, which also is the Putin narrative because they're retweeting this with their Russian bots. This, if you're so on the I'm same side as WikiLeaks too. and Putin, I wonder, do you perceive if you're on the, the same side as WikiLeaks and Putin, you should take uh, a step back and wonder whose bidding are you really doing? I don't even know what to say. I don't want to explode on TV, so I'm just going to end this segment now. Let, let the record reflect I'll you. I'll see you next week. Working for a hostile foreign government. We'll be back soon. So what's the difference between disagreement and bad faith? Disagreement is legitimate. It may be contentious, but it's honest. Bad faith is what you just saw when you ask a legitimate question and you are shouted down, indeed accused of crime. A sitting congressman just accused this show of harming American national security and working for Vladimir Putin. It's going to be an incredibly intense couple of months. We're going to cover every bit of it on this show. Good night from Washington. Thanks for sticking with us. Hannity's next.